Probably waste majority of the black powder shooters start with a percussion revolver. And I'm pretty sure that most of these beginner guns are open top revolvers. Just like this grandpa aged Uberti 1851 Navy I'll be presenting in today's video. And that little girl is still accurate, ladies and gentlemen. I fired three shots aiming at the bottom center of the black. These are the first three shots. And I tried to hit the center also. That was the second three shots. Which means that the pistol is shooting to the point of aim at 25 meters. Which tells me that we can move further. Hello YouTube, this is Captain Ball here in this beautiful April weather in Hungary. This is your favorite gun channel in beautiful, bright Hunglish language. And today I have a very special topic for you. It's about open top percussion revolvers. Especially it's about the 1851 Navy. And it is about the first 1851 Navy repros. We usually say that the open top revolvers are not as accurate as the percussion solid frame revolvers. <coughs> Shut up! Said that. And I really have to say that partially I agree with this, because uh, they are simpler to use, that's for sure. But if you understand the basics of why an open-top revolver is accurate or not, and you are willing to run, then you can achieve the same kind of accuracy. I know what I'm, I'm telling to you, because I have experience in this. I have been shooting these guns for more than two decades now, and I really have to say that you can find the accurate load, and you can find the way of accurately shooting an open top percussion revolver like the 1851 Navy. That's our topic today, the 1851 Navy. So today I will try to prove this to you. I have a very special 1851 Navy here that I'm going to shoot for distances that it was not designed for. I'm going to shoot this revolver from 25 up to 100 meters distance, which is far, 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 far beyond the distance that any handgun was designed for. This particular piece is a special gun because it has a serial number of Three, number three. This gun was made in 1963, so it is exactly 60 years old and it's still shooting good. This was made by Aldo Uberti, by Uberti SRL, for the American company called Navy Arms, Valfour Jets Navy Arms Company. So this is one of the very, very first guns that ever were produced under the brand name of Aldo Uberti. So why is the Navy so important for us? Because this is the revolver that started it all. This is the revolver that started the black powder historical shooting era that we are living today, ladies and gentlemen. And all this stuff was started by four people, three Italian and one American guy. The American guy was Val Forget, owner of Navy Arms. And the three Italians were Vittorio Gregorelli, Luciano Amadi and Aldo Uberti. I have been shooting this revolver for more than one and a half decades now and I really have to say that I'm always delighted to see its accuracy, its beautiful finish. It is very very close to the original so I'm really, really happy to own it. And I've always thinking about all the joyful moments that these percussion revolvers, these reproduction percussion revolvers gifted us to enjoy black powder. And this is very very important because these guns made black powder shooting accessible to everyone. The Black Powder Revolver repros are much cheaper than any kind of other gun, so they make this sport accessible for a wide audience. 
And for this, we have to be grateful for the Italian companies that are still manufacturing these beautiful repros for us. So let's learn now the history of the very first Uberti 1851 navies, and let's see how this lady is punching holes today. But before we continue, let me thank you for your support, your donation through Patreon, or buying your authentic American Civil War cartridge boxes, or percussion revolver cartridge formers, or US Arsenal Stadia rangefinders, or rubber printing plates for Arsenal cartridge bundles, or powder measure sets, or our traditional flintlock tools, all help to keep the quality of our channel high. Without you, this could be much more difficult. So thank you very much, guys. The charge of your revolver needs development. This topic will be covered in the next part of this video. To decide the proper size of bolt, you have to slug both your chambers and your bore. My revolver loves 375 round balls and 15 grains of 3F Swiss powder. The powder charge does not fill the chambers entirely, so I use 7 grains of corn wet as filler to raise the ball to the mouth of the chamber for maximum accuracy. The lube serves for keeping the residue soft for keeping accuracy from shot to shot, so having a good quality lube is a must. Let's start it with 50 meters. Well, this should be fun. the kill. Let's fix it. One last shot. A miss. But anyway, it's not hard to hit the target from 50 meters. So I wouldn't say that I'm via turb, but all the five shots are in the size of a head. I have problem with one of the nipples. Probably that's why it was a miss, but anyway, it's good. It's absolutely not bad. The history of modern time replica manufacturing is connected to the history of the 1851 Navy, but actually, the first modern time assembled 1851 navies were originals. They were built from leftover stocks from the Colt factory, and actually 120 of these were manufactured in the 1940s and they were sold to the public. The idea came from William B. Edwards, technical editor of the Guns magazine, and the parts came from William Stokes Kirk's inventory in Philadelphia. One of these revolvers, the number 82 serial, was the one that started it all. That was the original that was copied by the reproduction making companies. The first 1851 Navy repro to be shipped to Italy has a special story as well. 
This number 82 original revolver was actually smuggled into Italy, as there was no feasible legal way to delivering it to Gregorelli and Uberti. If you wish to find out more info about the early story of percussion revolver replicas, I strongly suggest you to visit capenbowrevolvers.com, an excellent source of information. A decade later, these 120 revolvers were sold to the public. William B. Edwards and Val Forget had an idea. As the centennial of the Civil War was coming, they were thinking about making reproductions of the original 1851 Navy. So they visited Europe to find production capacity. They visited France, Britain and also Italy. While visiting the Beretta factory in Gardone Valtrompia, Italy, they had a very good guide. It was Luciano Amadi. He had a very good command in English, quite rare by that time in Italy. And after the official tour, they had a private meeting as well. And during this private meeting, Val Forget and Edwards described the project of manufacturing reprots for the American market. And Amadi loved the project. Val Forget offered him a one US dollar commission for each and every single revolver shipped to the US. Gardone was an excellent location. It is situated between high mountains at the valley of the river Mella from north of Brescia. So it has the manpower, it has the raw materials, the metal and the wood that you need for making guns. And it also has the energy because the river, river is there. And uh, Gardone was always a great center for making firearms in Europe. They have been making firearms for 500 years for Europe. That is a huge, rich heritage that they cherish today as well. Mario Amadi organized the production. He found two guys, two great guys, Vittorio Gregorelli, who had a gun manufacturing license, and Aldo Uberti, a mechanic from the Beretta factory, who was able to assemble the guns. So this cooperation proved to be very successful. Val Forget, in the meantime, established a company in the America, in the United States, for the distribution of the guns. This was Navy Arms, a well-known company also today. So the production started in the late 50s. The first 10 1851 navies and the first six Griswold and Gunnison revolvers arrived to the US in 1957. And after minor modifications, in 58, the production finally started. The first 250 pieces order arrived to Gregorelli and Uberti, and they started manufacturing. And they received 500 US dollars for the project. Gregorelli manufactured the parts and secured the legal background of the project, while Aldo Uberti assembled the guns. It was a beautiful cooperation. These guns, these first reproductions arriving to the American market, they were marked G and U, like Gregorelli and Uberti. The number three navy of this video is supposed to be one of the very first revolvers made by Uberti SPA. According to its date stamp, it was made in 1963. The groove-to-groove -groove diameter of the bore is 375 exactly, and the chamber diameter is 374 meaning that it actually does not size the ball at all. And that is the proper way to achieve accuracy. The twist rate of the bore is not copy of the original progressive pitch. It has a one turn in 19 inches twist rate. That is quite good for target shooting. Let's see 75. I love it. Yes.
Another miss. Seventy-five meters, and I have four shots out of the six. Well, three and a half because this only hit the side of the plate. But anyway, it was a gong. It had a sound, which means it's a hit. <laughs> That's good. It's really, really great fun to shoot the revolver to these distances. And the group is not that bad. Probably all the shots were too high. I was aiming somewhere here, but probably I should have been aiming somewhere lower. But anyway, it's good. Anyway, it's good. Let's try 100. This is what happens to my beautiful bullets. That's their end. Aldo Uberti was a very talented and hardworking man. He was raised in a family in Incino, close to Gardo Neva Trompia, in a family of six children. He was only three when he lost his father, and he was only nine when he was already polishing stocks at home. After finishing the Zana del Gasmissing School, he immediately started to work for Beretta at the age of 14. So he understood quite well how the guns are made. By that time, well, those times were different. By that time, they had a 12 hour work shift per day, and even on Sunday, they had to work for six hours. Well, I don't really know how we could handle that today. He had a great passion for the American West, and he was fascinated with the elegance of the 1851 Navy, and he saw a very good business opportunity in making them. Uberti was a talented businessman, but also knew everything about gun making. It was said that he could have made the Eiffel Tower with a single file, and he probably needed less time than the French. In the late 1950s, Uberti bought out Gregorelli from the business and started its own production under the name A. Uberti S.P.A. And by the end of the 60s, he built a factory that was manufacturing the best available repros for the American market. Aldo Uberti passed away on the 21st March 1998, but the company, now owned by Beretta, is still making beautiful firearms reproductions, making this beautiful sport accessible for the new generations as well. Today the company is run by his right hand, Mr. Giacomo Merlino. Let's go for 100 meters. Let's aim a bit higher. Ah, that's really, really tiny. <laughs> Doesn't anybody have a rifle here? meters. I love it. Did I tell you I love it? This. That's the last one.
ladies and gentlemen. This 1851 Navy made in 1963, so it is nearly as old as original guns. Can still shoot at 100 meters. I was able to put 50% of my shots into the target. Well, this one was a lucky hit, but you always need some luck when you're a shooter. So who needs a rifle anyway, ladies and gentlemen, when you have an 1851 Navy? I love that gun. It's so elegant. It looks primitive, but it's so, so elegant. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more percussion revolver info, because in the next part I will be talking about what to check on a percussion revolver to make it a tech driver. If you like what I do, then please subscribe, share, comment and like. This will help to grow the channel. If you wish, and you can, please support me through Patreon or by buying your products. So ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay cool and keep your powder ha, dry.